All right, everybody, it's officially time to do another timing belt on my 2003 Mitsubishi Montero. Last time I did one was 156,000 miles. I'm actually up at 225, so I'm a little bit past where I should have been to do this job. And I'm gonna walk you guys through how to do it. Since I'm doing it, I figure I might as well take you along with me. Now, this is gonna apply specifically to the 2003 through 2006 3.8 liter. So that's the one I have. However, if you have the 3.5, so the earlier Gen 2, or sorry, Gen 3, then this is also gonna be pretty much the same process since the front end of the motor is about the same. So I'm gonna walk you guys through that, but first let me show you the kit I got and why you should get the same kit because it's super helpful. All right, so here we've got my timing belt kit and a few other components. And I wanna talk first about what the timing belt job is like before you jump into it, what you're gonna need and what to expect in it so that if you're thinking about doing this job, hopefully you have an idea of what to order so you have all the pieces and parts put together. Because this is a pretty similar timing belt job if you've done any other timing belt. However, the components you use and one specialty tool, this guy right here, um, makes a pretty big difference to how the job's gonna turn out for you. So first of all, um, you need to do a timing belt, um, that's this guy right here, and a water pump, because you might as well when they're off, every 60,000 miles after break-in period. Now, most of our Monteros at this point, they're past break-in period, so you have to do it every 60,000 miles. Now, that's important because some Toyotas and Subarus are 90,000 miles or 100,000 miles, and that's a lot longer than 60,000 miles. And the main culprit of that is this guy right here. This is your timing belt tensioner. And as we get into the job, you'll see where this is and what it does, but basically it holds tension on that belt as it breaks in, as it wears in. And this little guy right here has got a hydraulic seal and it works pretty well, at least the OEM one does, up to 60,000 miles and then it will start to get slack in it, it'll start to leak out oil and it starts to make a horrible clatter. When that happens, your timing belt can get um, pretty shaky. It's possible that you can jump teeth on your timing belt and cause catastrophic engine failure. And I don't say that to be dramatic, that's just the way that it is. So it's very important to do this job. And if you're buying a Montero right now and you don't know when the belt was last done, you don't know if they used OEM components, I would recommend getting this done as soon as possible because it takes only one day for it to go from being uh, totally fine to pretty much broken. And so you never know if that's gonna be on a long trip or whatever, it could really screw things up. So you're gonna wanna do this as soon as possible. Now, the reason that I wanna point this guy out, here's the OEM part number for this is there's a lot of other manufacturers that make this part. You can buy them at O'Reilly's and AutoZone and Napa and whatever, but they are not as good as the OEM part. And I know people say, um, you can, you know, you don't always have to go OEM, but this is a part where you have to go OEM. I've heard way too many horror stories. I've experienced horror stories myself of people having these fail as soon as 10,000 miles. This is a pretty big job. You don't want to be doing it 10,000 miles later. So buy the OEM part for this um, by the OEM timing belt tensioner, as well as it's really good to have an ASIN pump, the Mitsubishi belt. Those are all OEM, Koyo bearings and that kind of thing. And here's the deal. I got this whole kit from Luso Overland. My buddy Marco over there has done an incredible job of finding these parts and he puts all of this together in a kit for you. So you just buy the kit and it's already OEM. When I used to do this before Marco, you had to buy this in one place and this in another place and this in another place and you had to like kind of piece it all together. And you'd end up with extra parts and, and paying extra shipping. He makes it so easy. You just punch in your car and boom, there's the timing belt. It comes all just like you see it, all the OEM parts. He's done a great job of putting that together. So I highly recommend checking out Luso Overland for that reason, but he goes a step further and he sends all of the instructions from the factory service manual to you in this kit. So this is, if you went to a Mitsubishi dealership, this is the manual that they would use to do this job. It doesn't get any better than this. It's got all the torque specs on it that you could need. It's got the exact procedure that you need to take everything off. Every part is labeled. It goes through some of the intricacies of how to take off the belt, how to put on the belt, things to look for, how to compress the timing belt tensioner if you need to reset it, blah, blah, blah. There's some other stuff that as I get into it, I'll show you exactly what's going on. But even like this very specific step is the one that throws everyone off. That's listed here. Everything you need to know is in here. And so this is awesome because it's everything you need, nothing you don't, and it's all in one spot. You don't have to shop around, you don't have to find all that stuff. 
So mad props to Luso Overland. That guy is great. He's a Mitsubishi owner and he's an enthusiast who started a business to meet our needs. And so I've got to give him props for that because that makes this job so easy. All right, now let's talk about the specialty tools you're going to need. Um, obviously, you're going to need metric wrenches, metric sockets, um, some big and some small ones. Uh, most of them are going to be 14s, 12s, and 10s. Um, but as we get into it, you'll kind of see what I'm using for all that. But there's a couple specialty tools you're going to want. The biggest one is going to be this guy right here. And this is, if you just go on eBay and look up Mitsubishi um, Montero timing belt tool, this is what you'll find. It looks like this. And this guy goes right in here. And the reason that's important is you're going to preload this with a torque wrench before you release tension on the belt. And so it's a very specific tool. It's a very specific torque and you have to do this step. If you don't do this step, again, like I said, from experience, I know that you'll wear out even an OEM timing belt tensioner in less than 10,000 miles. But I'll show you that when we get in there. But this is a part, if you're about to jump into this job and you don't have this part yet, stop. Don't take your car apart order this part and wait for it first. With that, you're gonna need a torque wrench that goes pretty low. This is an inch pound torque wrench. And then this is a specialty tool actually for holding a dirt bike clutch. If you just go on Amazon and look up Tusk dirt bike clutch holder, I like this tool. Someone um, showed me this because of two things. One, it allows you to grip the camshaft sprockets when they move, because they will move when you pull off the belt. It allows you to grip them evenly so you can bring them back. I've seen horror stories of people breaking their cams when they do this. Not their cams, but their camshaft sprockets. And then you've got to wait a week or two for those specialty parts to come in. So having this is a, a lot of safety for that. But also, when you're taking off or tightening the crank pulley, um, these, these guys right here are super helpful for that. A couple other things you might want to consider when doing this job is you're going to have a lot of parts off. This might be a good time to replace them. Over here, we have um, some specialty tools for stuff like that. So for pulling seals, you get two different kinds of seal pullers. And these are hose clamps um, for uh, getting the transmission fluid specifically to stop flowing. But let's look at some of the other parts that you might want to replace and why you might need those. These are not necessary for the timing belt water pump job, but they are nice to have. So as you're in here, like I said, you're going to be taking a lot of parts off. You, the biggest one is you're going to be taking apart the entire cooling system. So this would be a good time to change out your radiator cap as well as your lower and upper radiator hoses. You're going to do a whole coolant flush when you do this, so that's good. But you might also consider changing your serpentine belt since that's got to come off as well. Serpentine belt pulleys and idlers, um, that kind of thing, and, and tensioners, as well as the cam sprockets. Um, they have they are going to be exposed and you can pull those off and replace your cam seals if those are leaking. Um, that's usually what I would do. However, I've been in here recently and I know that they're pretty good, so I won't be replacing any of those. But those are good parts to just have on hand. They only cost a couple bucks and to get them shipped to your house so that you have them and you're ready means that if you get into this job and you realize, oh my gosh, my, my crank seal or my cam seal is bad, you can just go ahead and replace it right there instead of pausing the job, having your rig be down for a week and having to restart it. So with that, let's get back into the shop, get all of our tools ready grab our instruction manual, and we're gonna jump into this job. All right, step number one is we're gonna drain the coolant. The petcock for the radiator is right here, and I can almost guarantee you that this is going to make a horrific mess, so be prepared for that. Put down lots of floor dryer, whatever. But we're gonna go ahead and undo that, get the cooling system drained, and then start pulling stuff off on top. All right, now back on top, we're gonna take off the air intake as well as the radiator support brackets. And then we're gonna to get to the shroud.
All right, so at this point we've taken off the shroud, we're down to the accessory belt, and this is where this starts to come in helpful, the factory service manual. So we're basically gonna go through these, drive belt, cooling fan, cooling fan pulley, auto tensioner, we're gonna just take all that off the front. One thing to keep in mind, this is the time to disconnect your battery since you're going to be pulling the alternator lead off. You don't want that hot wire, and so um, you're gonna wanna disconnect that. But let's keep going as we let the radiator drain um, down a bit more. All right, getting these guys off right here, these little fan pulley bolts can be hard. These are 10 millimeter. And so my trick is uh, if you have the belt off, just wedge a pry bar in there to hold it. And then you can get at one of those nuts and kind of uh, rotate it around. Just be really careful not to bend these studs. All right, so now we've got the belt off and the fan off, and now we're gonna take out a ton of these. This is called your accessory plate. It's gonna hold all of your pulleys and your accessories, like your alternator, your power steering, and your AC. And uh, one of my recommendations when you're doing this is to follow this instructions as far as what needs to come off and when. And then, one of the things that I do is I actually, I get one of these boxes, um, it's a bolt organizer, and I label it with a Sharpie to, so, to show exactly what I'm taking off. And so I'll go through this and actually like, on step, I don't know, step three for those bolts, I'll say, okay, that's number three. And I'll just put a three next to it or a seven next to the AC compressor or whatever. That way, when you're putting it back together, you never have to wonder where it is. I prefer these to the bags because they're more hardy. They're gonna lock and stay together. And you can write really clearly on the front so you can see exactly what it is. And then as you're putting things back, you can just look at you know the windows that aren't, um, empty and you can figure out what you need to put back on. So I'm gonna start pulling a bunch of bolts off of there. I'm actually gonna try to get away with not pulling the AC compressor. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys how to do that. I've done it before. I think you can do it um, and that saves a bunch of time. So let's get into it and see how far we can get. All right, now you get the two bolts on the alternator undone. Be careful when you're taking this off not to damage this pulley. You'll really shorten the life of this alternator as well as there's a plug and a main lead wire coming off the back of this. So for the job I'm doing, I'm just gonna leave the alternator down here. Like I said, be careful of the pulley, but you don't need to remove it all the way to get at all this stuff. So I just set it down here, make sure it's in a safe spot where it's not gonna fly around. That makes for an easier installation. Over here, we have your crankshaft sensor wire. This is gonna be really important to remember where it goes, because when you install it, you want it on the outside of the accessory plate. So we're gonna go ahead and get that out of the way. And then we're gonna undo all of these bolts. It's a combination of 14s and 17s on this accessory drive. All right, so I've now pulled all the bolts out of the accessory drive, as well as a stabilizer bracket here. And I haven't pulled the AC or the power steering but you can actually wiggle this out of here. Now it's, it takes a little bit of doing, but you can actually finagle it out of here. It's gonna get caught up on some stuff. And this will hopefully work on your car as well because it saves you a lot of time without having to take this or that off. So I'm gonna get this wiggled out of here and then that'll expose the timing components. All right guys, so I got this off and I was able to get it. It took a little bit of finagling, especially with this corner. And uh, hopefully this works on your car. If it doesn't work and you can't get it off, just remove the AC compressor. But this has worked for me twice now, so hopefully it'll work for you. But I wanted to show you guys this accessory drive bracket because it gives you a good lay of the land of what you're looking at as far as bolts to take off. And now we can get down to the nitty gritty and the timing components. So I've taken off the covers and now I'm down to the timing belt. And this is why it's so important to do this job at 60,000 miles is I haven't touched this at all. And you can already see how much slack is in this belt around the water pump. I can spin this water pump freely by hand. And so that means that this belt is, there's some slack in it and it's possible that it wouldn't even be turning this. You can even see some belt fragments it looks like. And so this is why it's so important to make sure this job has been done or to do this job on a regular basis on the regular scheduled 60,000 miles so that this doesn't lead to cat catastrophic failure in your motor. All right, so this is the first really tricky part of this disassembly is getting off this crank pulley. Now, like I mentioned before, you can use this Tusk clutch puller and get it lined up in these holes. And then you can get a buddy with a breaker bar to get in there and you can get the socket into there to get to the crank bolt and you can turn it off. An easier way to do it is to use an impact. If you have an impact that's strong enough to take it off, get it in there. Now you can see that I have the small or the short um, clutch, or sorry, crank bolt 
um, in there. That's another upgrade that I'd recommend doing if you're doing this job. If you don't have it, it's gonna be harder to get an impact in there with the radiator. And you can see I still have the radiator in. I don't actually think I'm gonna have to pull this out. Um, but if you have the short one, it's easier to get an impact in there and bust that off. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to do right now. All right, so I got that out just barely using my rigid impact. It barely fits. A pneumatic air impact might be um, better suited for the job because they can, sometimes they're tinier. But there's my crank bolt. Now I'm gonna take off the harmonic balancer to gain access to this timing cover. And then I'm actually gonna end up putting all this back on so I can set the motor to top dead center before pulling this tensioner and disassembling the timing belt. All right, here's where it's gonna get really technical is you need to set this thing to top dead center. So using these uh, instructions, it's pretty easy to figure it out. But basically, we're gonna get our timing marks lined up. So you can see here, there's your timing mark on your passenger side cam and your driver side cam, as well as the one down here on your crank. And so that's how you want this to be. Um, and the way I'm gonna do it is like I said earlier, I reinstalled the crank bolt and I'm gonna just get my ratchet down here and I'm gonna rotate this clockwise. You always wanna rotate it clockwise until all of my marks are lined up. I'm gonna do my best to show you guys what that looks like. Finding the timing marks down here can be pretty hard, but I'm gonna try to catch it on video. That way you guys can have confidence that you know exactly where your motor needs to be. Okay, so we got everything rotated over and now the motor is at top dead center. And so it's, like I said, it's hard to see down here but you can see this little dot right there corresponds to a divot on that back plate, which lines up with that fin right there. And that's how you know it's timed. Don't confuse it with this uh, little indicator right here for the crankshaft sensor. It's gonna be that little dot right there on the crank. Up here on the driver's side cam, you can see that these guys are lined up. There's a little notch right there and it's lined up with that mark in the rear timing cover. And then over here, likewise, there's a mark over here that corresponds to this. Now what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna mark my belt just for safety's sake um, to know where these go. I might transfer those marks onto my other belt, but helps you keep a tooth count between the whole thing. And then what I'm gonna do is after I've got those marked, I'm going to pull the timing chain or timing belt tensioner. When I do that, everything is going to move. And this can be really scary the first time you do it, but basically this cam is loaded, or sometimes they say this is a hot cam, so it's gonna move backward or forward or whatever. And so just be aware, it's going to jump. Now, because you've got it set to top dead center, it's not gonna jump and do any damage, um, but it's going, to, it's going to move. And that's where that clutch tool comes in for putting that uh, back to where it needs to be. But I'll explain that when we get closer to it. So right now I'm good there. I'm going to mark my belt and then I'm going to pull that tensioner. All right. So we got that tensioner pulled out. Now I'm pulling out the timing belt. I'm going to carefully just get this guy out of here. And then the next step is going to be removing all of the timing components uh, that need to be replaced. So this pulley and that pulley mostly are the ones that need to be replaced. And you can already hear this one. Yeah, you can hear that one's that one's worn out. And this one's this one's pretty seized as well. Well, I mean, they've just they've just been in here for sixty thousand miles. So time to get those replaced. All right, so that concludes our timing belt section as far as removal goes. Everything's taken off the pulleys and uh, the belt and all that. Now you're gonna make sure to leave these guys at top dead center, right where they're at. So obviously you don't wanna start the car or anything, but you also wanna make sure not to bump these as much as you can. And remember, you're gonna use these reference points to get it back on top dead center when you um, put the new belt on. But now, since we're doing a water pump as well, you can access most of the bolts for the water pump, except for these outlet ones on the top. So that involves taking apart some of this stuff. You don't have to take off the intake manifold, but we're gonna have to remove a lot of these sensors and electrical things and we're gonna get down there into here. This is also a good time to replace your thermostat. If you're gonna be in here, might as well replace it. But I'm gonna get into tearing this down. This is pretty straightforward. You can follow the instructions, but everything pretty much um, is self-explanatory. Just taking the bolts off all the way down to the top of the water pump there.
So I freed the water pump. I actually forgot that the easiest way to get this out is to undo all the bolts on the water pump after taking this top section out. So you saw me get the top section out and now the whole thing pops off. It's just way easier to replace everything like this and then reinstall it like this so you can get to all the bolts. Two things to keep in mind. One, you're gonna lose a lot of coolant this way. So just be prepared for that with stuff on the ground. And then two, you've got two O-rings here. Um, when you reinstall this, you're gonna wanna make sure to put a good amount of lubricant on those O-rings, some silicone or whatever, so that you don't damage them because it would really suck to screw that up and then have to get all the way back in here just to replace that O-ring. So now let's go to the bench and replace this water pump with all new gaskets and a new pump. All right, now inside we have this on the bench. You can see that none of the metal gasket came off um, on this side. It's all on the block side, but I already pulled that off. Here's where that O-ring goes. And like I mentioned before, Luso's got all the best stuff. His kit comes with um, the original OEM water pump and it comes with the original OEM O-ring as well as this gasket right here and the water pump gasket. So that's excellent. All we have to do is pull this apart. And I would actually recommend if you're not planning on getting in here, I wouldn't touch any of these gaskets just to leave them alone. So I'm going to pull these three bolts off, swap over the water pump and get it back installed on the vehicle. Sweet. Well, now we're back on the block side of the engine and the water pump. I just took some time and cleaned these guys up with a razor blade. There's a metal gasket or it should be a metal gasket if it's OEM. Um, but I just cleaned these up. It's a good time to get in here. Make sure that that surface is really looking good. I also sprayed this down. Um, with some water and everything, tried to clean it up as best you can. I installed the new O-ring back here um, and put some silicone on it. I'll make sure to hit it with some more silicone right before I slip the water pump on, as well as that guy. Now, it's worth noting I found two things. One, this O-ring is not included in the set. Now, it's a completely different component, so that makes sense, but that O-ring is not complete er, in the set, and neither is this gasket. So if you are gonna do this job, you gotta get this gasket, and if you wanna replace that O-ring, that's a good idea as well. Um, so those are two things that are not included in this that you might want to replace since you do have to take off this gasketing surface. So now I'm gonna put this back in and uh, get, to the, get to the installation side of this project. All right, we're at the point of reinstallation, and this is a pretty tricky process. Um, if you've ever done a Titan build before, it's not altogether different as far as getting it lined up. But I'm going to do my best to explain what I'm doing. Then I'm going to have to take some time to fiddle with it and get it just right. Then I'll probably explain what I did. So the most important thing here is to make sure that none of your timing marks have moved. And so mine actually have stayed the same with the exception of this one. Like I said, this one tends to move a little bit. Or I think this one jumped one tooth, um, which is no big deal for right now. But this time belt wants to start at the crank, go to this idler pulley, up to the driver's side cam, down around your water pump, passenger cam, back to your tensioner uh, pulley, or sorry, your tensioner cam and pulley. Um, and you're gonna leave this loose. So the way to do it is leave this bolt loose bolt the tensioner in and then leave this pin in. Do not pull this pin prior to this. If you do, you're gonna have to compress it in a vise really slowly and carefully. Um, but you're gonna leave that pin in and you're gonna leave this loose because you have to set the eccentric cam um, a, a certain preload on it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my timing marks are good. I gotta make sure this is as tight as possible going up to here and all the way over here. Make sure it's all lined up and then I'm gonna show you how to set this before doing your um, check where you rotate the motor counterclockwise two revolutions to make sure your timing marks are still all lined up. So let me get after that and I'll fill you guys in when I have everything lined up as best I can. Sweet, all right, this is the part that everyone screws up which is setting this eccentric cam, which is uh, pretty hard to see, pretty hard to explain. But basically there's those two holes and then you've got these two holes in this prong here and you're gonna put it on an inch pound torque wrench and it's 39 inch pounds of preload. So in order to do that, you're gonna line this guy up with the cam, get the, get the two things in the hole right there, and you're gonna preload this against the timing belt. And in this case, I'm gonna feel a little click. That's as much pressure as you want. Then you have to get in here with an impact or a wrench or something and tighten it up. So I'm gonna do that 
and then uh, that will set the preload for this. This is a really important step. If you don't do this, um, you will wear out your timing belt tensioner prematurely. And so that's why you have to have this tool and make sure you set this correctly. All right, so I've got this in, I got it tightened up. And uh, here's a couple good indicators that you've got it right. So some illustrations show these holes down, some show them up. I've seen them go either way, doesn't seem to matter. But I'm gonna go with, uh, with up because it's just easier to torque it down. And some guys have gotten away with just saying, get these pretty close to level. And that's how you know that that's set right. If you don't have the special tool or whatever, that seems to be working for some guys. I prefer to use the more scientific method. But the way, the sure shot way to know if you've got it is this pin should be loose. This pin should be loose so that you can kind of pull it in and out without much effort. If you have to really yank on this to get it out, you probably haven't set this preload correctly. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna double check or triple check, I guess, all of my timing marks. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that pin and then I'm gonna rotate the timing belt or the, um, the crankshaft and all of the timing components to full revolutions to make sure they still line up. If all of that is good, we're ready to reassemble here in the timing area. All right, this is looking good. We got everything lined up. I double checked my timing marks. It's good. So the tensioner, pin's been pulled, that's been set. Belt is tight all the way around. That's another thing you want, you want to check is just make sure the belt is tight all the way around. There's no slack in it. And uh, if you do screw this up, and what I mean screw this up is you just, you didn't quite get the timing right here. And so you rotate it over and you're off a tooth. You're going to want to reset that. You have to go all the way to top dead center again, as best you can. You're going to remove this tensioner. If you can slide the pin back in, that's the easiest, but you're going to remove the tensioner and then you're going to have to reset these cams. And that's where you can use that clutch tool to grab the outside of the sprocket and turn it. Um, you can also use a 17 mil wrench on this, um, but that's not always reliable. I would avoid using a pry bar in this. That's where I see people break these cams. And so that's how you do it. You want to make sure that this is absolutely dead on correct. Um, the, uh, it's pretty easy if you aren't paying attention to the, the crank right here to get it me messed up. I've done that before. I've done, I've messed up this timing belt in a number of ways. So I'm hoping this video helps prevent that for other people. But now that this is set, I've removed my crank bolt. I'm gonna reinstall my harmonic balancer. Um, well, first thing I do the timing cover, then I'm gonna do the harmonic balancer, and then I'm gonna start reinstalling all of this stuff. The best way to do this is to follow all of the instructions just in reverse. That way you don't put something on and then have to take it off again to put something else on, mainly these timing covers. So I'm gonna get back to that and uh, hopefully we'll have this thing running here in an hour. So I got everything back installed here. I've got the accessory drive plate back on, tightened up all these bolts. And if you're curious about which bolts go where, this is where the 17 goes and the rest are pretty much the same size, uh, except for these guys, these guys are shorter. And so I was able to get it back past here. One thought, if you come in here and you're gonna do this job, um, you could Dremel this out. Obviously it's gotta hold a little bit, but you could Dremel some of this out um to fit it in more easily but like i said i was able to get it in uh and that's that's working for me i also installed the harmonic balancer and then i very carefully ran this crank sensor line all the way like this this is as far as i know this is the correct wiring for it all the way up to here this keeps it well out of the way of the accessory drive as well as the timing belt and the harmonic balancer because you don't want to lose that so next up, it's gonna be pretty easy. I'm gonna put the alternator on. Um, I'm gonna install all of the accessory drive pulleys and tensioners. I'm gonna install the fan uh, clutch pulley and uh, then we're gonna install the fan. I got everything back together, went together really smoothly, got the air box in, got the radiator hoses attached, and everything is ready to go. The only thing left to do is fill it with coolant. And if you've never done that before, 
using these bleeder ports is the key. You open these up, basically you fill this up until you see coolant come out of there. Then you uh, close them up and I've almost never had any air come out of the system after that. It's a really good way to do it. I've got a couple more things to do on this car. So I'm gonna end the video here, but I'm gonna keep working. But hopefully that was helpful for you guys. One thing I wanted to point out that's gonna be a little different for some of you is I left the radiator in. Now I mentioned uh, you might need to plug the transmission lines if you do this. And that's if you're pulling this radiator out. I was able to do that because I was able to get my very short impact in there to take off the crank bolt. If you can't do that, if you need to get a bigger uh, impact in there, or if you need the room, you can pull this radiator out. However, it is possible to do it with it in the car. So if you need a little more room, you can take it out. Super simple. Just unplug the two transmission cooler lines and these top brackets, it pops right out. But for the sake of ease, I decided to leave it in since I knew I could do it. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Hopefully this is a video that's helpful for figuring out how to do this timing belt. This job took me about four hours and that was while filming. Um, if this is your first time doing a timing belt or if this is the first time doing it on this car, I'd budget a couple more hours than that. A good day, a good Saturday or Sunday worth of work. So hopefully this is helpful. Leave your guys questions down below and I'll see you on the next one.